Hey, everyone, everyone, welcome to my daily Euskera practice in which I attempt to learn Euskera, the Basque language. I'm a total beginner. If you're new to the channel, I've been working through a workbook, A11, beginner level, that I picked up on my last trip to the Basque country. So I figured today I'm going to keep it moving. Let's keep going forward. Unit three of this workbook is all about family and friends. Familia et lagunac. And I think I know a lot of this vocabulary already. So this is going to be the test. I'm going to work through a few of these exercises and um, either you'll learn something along with me or Maybe you just find it entertaining to watch me. I don't know how this works or why, but we're all locked down together. So whatever entertainment we can find on the internet, well, I'm glad you clicked on this video and found me. So here we go. The first exercise I'm working on today, it's a whole family tree. And I believe I have to fill out some things based on this family tree. The first section, it says in Basque, ser dira Carmelerensat. Oh Lord. Carmelerensat? Question mark. Now, I'm not so good with my suffixes in Basque yet, so I don't know what Rensat means. Uh, I've figured out in this workbook by now that Carmele is a name, so that's a person in this family tree. Luckily, the instructions are translated into Spanish, which I don't actually speak, but I understand a lot better than Basque because I speak French and I took Many years of Spanish in school. So here we go. ¿Qué son para Carmele las personas de abajo? So what is the relation between Carmele and the following people? Let us see. Number one, we are looking for Felisa. Felisa is Carmele's mom. So we go ama. Easy. How about Mikel? Mikel has a little line next to Carmele. So I'm going to say that's her husband. Do I know how to say husband in Basque? Nope. Escondatu is to marry. Escondatuta, to be married or married as an adjective, I think. And so what's the noun that goes with that? Is it like her escondua or something? I don't know. I don't know husband because that is a vocabulary word in Basque in my family I never had to use because <laughs> I ain't got no husband. Uh, moving on, how about Leire eta Amaya? So Leire and Leire and Amaya are below Carmele on the family tree. So I'm gonna say they are her daughters, which are Alabac. And then we have Aitor eta Xavier, who are also her children, and they are her sons. So Shemeak. Oh, the cat is coming in for a visit. All right, next exercise. Ser dira leire... So many R's. Ser dira leire rensat. I'm not so good with trilling my R's, especially when there's multiple R's in a row. Like, mm -mm. Ser dira leire rensat. Okay. Que son para leire estas personas? So same thing, but leire this time is... Carmele's daughter. So Tomas, then if Tomas is Carmele's father, that makes her lady's grandfather, which, and depending where you are, has different words. Uh, I learned in Batois, grandfather is Aitona. Who says that? We don't say that. It's Aitachi, where my dad is from. So I'm gonna put Aitachi. Felisa is Tomas's wife. So this would be letters Amachi or Amona or Amuma or whatever you want to call her. Carmele is Leda's mom again. So Ama, Mikel, Carmele's husband. So this would be Leda's dad, Aita. Okay, all right. Thank you. Amaya is her sister. So that's Aispa. And Xavier et Aitor. Oh man. So my first thought here is to say brothers, which and the word I know for brother is Anaya, but I'm I'm kind of confused on like the official standing on this, at least in terms of Batois, because I have a um a CD for learning Basque, Le Basque pour les nuls, 
which is French to Basque, like a CD language course for beginners. And I don't remember what the vocabulary they used was, but I remember they um, had two different words for brothers and sisters, and it was dependent on the gender of the person. So like, if a girl had a brother, like that was a different word for if a guy had a brother, um, which I don't, I don't think they do that in my dad's Basque. I, maybe they do, but uh, that was the first time I was introduced to this concept. And <laughs> sorry, the cat is very active this afternoon. Um, so I don't, I don't know what the cat. Will you pick a spot and just sit down? Okay, thank you. Perfect. Um, so I don't know what the right answer in this situation is. I My first inclination is to say anayak, but I think in Batois it's like a different word because she's a girl and I don't know what it is. But if anyone has any thoughts on that, let me know in the comments. Okay, next exercise based on this family tree, we have que son para Xavier, ser dira Xavierensat. So Xavier is one of the sons on this family tree or grandsons. Uh, so Aitor is his brother, again, uh, is it a special word? I think this is the Anaya one, maybe not. And then Amaya et Aileire, Leire, why do I have a hard time with that name? Um, da, da, da. So again, I want to say I spot, but I think that's maybe for girls and there's a different one for boys, like I don't know, but I spot is what I'm putting, even though I think in Batois it's something different. All right, let's go on to the next exercise, or I guess the next thing on here is more of an explanation of no la dago, no la qua da. Como esta, como es. Really? No la qua da? Really? If you watched the last video I made, literally just yesterday, I was struggling with a dialogue where I encountered no la cuada for the first time. And like, I'm not gonna say it's like just the Basque language learning material. Like I'm sure this happens in language learning materials all over the world with all languages. But like, why? <laughs> why are you gonna show me something, have me real confused and then teach me about it later? Like, why don't you just teach me first instead of confusing me you know, like like this page would have been really helpful like two pages ago <laughs> to help me understand what I did yesterday. But okay, all right, that's okay. We're here now. We're getting around to it. No la cuada. What is that? So, como es, como esta. So I guess my, my guess yesterday was correct. And then it means like, how is it sort of? Um, there's, okay, so there's a permanent state here and there's a temporary state like ser nestar like Isan and Egon. Oh, right, because it is no la dago is Egon, no la cuada is Isan. So I guess no la dago is more like how is it temporarily and no la cuada is how is it like forever. So the examples they're giving, no la cuada, tristeada. It's sad, like permanently sad, okay. But then they've got another example, no la dago, triste dago. It is sad. What? Do you see how this is confusing to English speakers? <laughs> like, they both mean it's sad, but clearly they mean different types of sad. Cool. All right, whatever. No la cuada, no la dago, same, same. It means how is it? I'm moving on to the next page because like, nah. Okay, we got a picture of a family here. Wonderful illustrations in this book. And in Basque, it's nor da nor i datsi i senak. I don't know what nor da nor means. Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> who's who? Ah, who's who, I think. Yeah. So in Spanish, he aquí una foto de la familia, obviously, quién es quién, yeah. Who is who? Nor da nor. Okay, so then, en el cuadro de abajo, puedes leer cómo 
es cada uno y cómo está en la foto. Okay, so like, then we can read what they're like as people and also like how they are in the photo. So I guess what they're like is the more permanent, the isan state here. And what they're like in the photo is more temporarily focused. Escribe los nombres en el cuadro. Okay, so, all right. So there's a whole chart down here where you can put nor, who is it, that's what I need to fill out. But there's also sections for nola, which we just went over is the temporary one. How are they in the photo? And nolacua, which is how are they like in life, I guess. Okay, let's try it. I feel like there's going to be some vocabulary in here that I don't know. The first one, nola, they are sutik which I learned in Basque church means like stand up, to stand. So whoever we're looking for is standing in this photo. There's only, oh, well, there's four people standing in this photo, so that doesn't narrow it down too much. Nolakwa bisarduna. Ah, what does that mean? Bisarduna. I'm going to look it up in my dictionary because I always have this next to me when I'm doing these exercises. And I'm making these videos, so let's go. Bisardua. Bisardua. With a Z. So we're going to... Bisardi? No. Bisardo? Bisardun. Okay. So Bisardo is full bearded. Bisardun is bearded. So whoever this person is, they have a beard. This is a bearded person. So we can rule out the women, hopefully. And okay, we got this guy standing here in the corner. He's got a little stubble facial hair situation. So what's his name? Oh, I have to figure out their names too. <laughs> They're not labeled. So we've got to go back to the family tree. So we got the two old people sitting down. That's got to be the grandparents, right? So then... What? That's gotta be the grandparents. And then, okay, so we're looking for an older couple, a younger couple, and four kids. But I'm confused because... <laughs> Look at this family. <gasps> okay, so my first inclination is to say that, I mean, the old people are sitting down, right? Because that's how it always is in Basque photos. But then this woman doesn't look too young either. She's got her arms around Itachi. Okay. So, like, who's who's her man? I would have said it would one of these guys. But, like, look at this body language. Like, she looks like she's with him. Okay. They look like they're together. But then, like, who is this? Who is this? We need four kids, so one, two, got them. This looks like an anxious teenager, so three kids. But like, who? Like, she's definitely not a daughter. Like, she's she's older, I think. So like, is this a daughter putting her arms around dad? What? Oh, weird. Um, I don't know. But either way, the kids, there's two daughters and two sons. I know that much. So, <sighs> okay, we're going to leave that one alone. I don't know who that dude is. I'm guessing one of the boys, like one of the sons. <laughs> I don't know. This is getting weird. Okay, next one. Nola, how are they in the photo? Eserita. Uh, Eserita. Eserita, yeah, I think we're speaking Basque, not Spanish, so it's not Eserita, like Senorita, it's Eserita, maybe. Um, so what would that be? Esquer is to the left, but it's not saying Eskerita. Eserita. Eseri, to sit, okay. All right, so whoever this is, they're seated, and Buru Shoila. I don't know for sure. I'm guessing that means bald just because Buru is head. So bald headed. It's got something to do with a head. Buru soy. Where you at? 
Yes, Buru Soil Bald. Okay, so whoever this is is seated and bald. This is definitely Grandpa. I don't care who he's married to at this point. I'm not even sure, but this is Aitachi. So this is Tomas. Oh, you genius. Wow. I didn't even see they filled one out for me already. Okay, so hopefully this will help solve the mystery of like who is married to who. Okay, so they're saying that Mikel is standing, Sutik. So he's not the bearded one, he's the other one with the ile kiskura. Curly hair? Kiskura? I don't know what that is. But ile is hair and it looks like he's got curly hair, so let's go with that. Okay, so that's Mikel. Okay, so if that guy is the dad, yeah, then the other two have to be the sons. Okay, moving on. We'll, we'll figure out who his wife is eventually. Let's go. Okay, the next person, Nola, they're Belaunico. Don't know what that means, but it says Noraqua, how are they? Ile Belsa, which I know means black hair, and there's one little boy in the corner who's kneeling, and he's got black hair, so I'm gonna say Belaunico is kneeling. Either way, I know that is a child, that is a son, and let's see, he looks younger than the other son. So the last one on the family tree is Xavier, so let us say his name is Xavier. Okay, next person, Nola Etzanda. Not sure what that means. Nolakwa Ile Horia. They've got blonde hair. Horia, yellow, yeah. Clearly, I haven't really learned like descriptive names for how people are yet. So I have to look all of these up. Etzanda. Etzanda. Because also, like, <laughs> this cartoon is in gray and green so like who's blonde here i don't know <laughs> is it the one with the green hair or the gray hair okay focus it's under it's under it's on to lay out so there is a little girl who's like kind of lounging so i guess the one with the gray hair was the blonde here and that is the youngest daughter whose name oh lady Okay, there she is, we found her. Next person is Sutik, again, they are standing with Ile Lucea. Lucea, doesn't that mean long? Long hair? Nobody is standing with long hair, but I guess one woman has longer hair than the other, so we'll go with that. But then the question is, I mean, that's gotta be, that's gotta be the daughter with her arms around dad because the other woman, like, she's got bags under her eyes. So I'm going to make a guess and say that that is daughter Amaya. And then next person, Sutik again. Nola, that's how they are. Ile Moza, short hair. So this has, this has got to be, this is the woman with the bags under her eyes. So it's got to be mom, Carmele. That's what I'm going to say. Okay, last but not least, uh, Eserita. Again, this person is kneeling. No, did I ever figure out what that means? I don't think I did. <laughs> oh, seated, seated, focused, yes. This person is seated and Nolakwa Gisena. I mean, this has to be grandma. This has got to be Amachi because there's only two people seated and we got one. But what is, what does Gisena mean? Gisendu Gisen. Fat. Oh, that was another word for fat. Okay. Oh, okay. It's a fat lady sitting in the chair, I guess. Uh, and her name is Felicia, is Amachi. So that leaves us back to the first person. That must have been. Uh, oh, one of the sons, Aitor. Not, one, not dad, that was one of the sons. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go to the back of the book because I think there's answers just to double check. Just kidding. I think I was wrong. There's no answers at the back of the book. So I'm just gonna guess I got everything right. 
Yeah, let's go with that. Good job. Okay, so honestly, I'm inclined to just end it there, but there's only a couple more exercises on the bottom and before we move on to something else. So I figure like, eh, while we're here, let's just keep it going, fill in the blanks. Hopefully it's not too complicated. So we gotta say no la daude, question mark, which we just learned no la daude means what are they like, but in a temporary state. So yeah, como están? Completa las frases. Let's go. Felisa Eserita Dago. So Felisa, hey, did they just give us the answers in these examples? Oh wow, okay. Felisa Eserita Dago, cool, she's sitting. Felisa eta Tomás. I mean, they're both sitting. So, Eseritak. Oh gosh, I'm really not good with knowing my like adjective noun agreements. Well, I guess it's not an adjective in this case, it's an object. Ugh. I'm bored already. I'm boring myself. Felisa de Tomás. I'm going to say Eseritak Daude. Next one, Leire Etsanda Dago. Aitor et Amaya es daude blank. Okay, so this is actually really cool. I don't need to look up the answers. Like in this exercise, I think I'll find out whether I got the names right or not because they're describing people to us. So, so Leire Etsanda, what did we say Etsanda meant? Oh, like laying down. Let's say Etsanda uh, Dago. Okay, Aitor et Amaya es daude blank. So who's Aitor and who's Amaya? Okay, so I have on my chart here that Aitor and Amaya are both standing, sutik, so uh, so they're not es daude etsanda, they're not laying down. Again, is it etsandak because there are two people or is it just etsanda? Lord knows. Xavier Belaunico Dago, and we said Belaunico means, I think, kneeling. I didn't look it up. Leire um, eta Amaya es daude blank. I mean, they're not kneeling. So, es daude Belaunico? Sure. Leire <laughs> posic Dago. Uh, does that mean happy? Leireren anai arebak. Ah, areba. Was that the other word for brother, sister? Leireren anai arebak ere blank daude. So Leire's siblings, I'm guessing. Anai arebak. They are also, shall we all say they are also posik? Yeah, let's go with that. I mean, everybody's smiling in the photo, so. All right, next exercise is no la dira. How are they, like in a more permanent way, como son, como están hoy, no la daude, inserta a o Ak, solo donde haga falta. So it's like we gotta finish the the endings of some of these words that have blanks to them. Okay. Based on if we're using nola or nola qua. Okay. Amona es dago urduri. The R's. Amona es dago urduri blank. Banya osho urduri blank da. I don't know what that means, urduri. Do I need to know what it means? No, I just need to figure out how to finish it. So in the first case, we're using dago. Well, maybe it would help to know what that means. <laughs> don't try to breeze through it. Get it done. Get it done right. Urduri. Uneasy, troubled, anxious, nervous, worried. Okay, that's a lot. So Amona is not anxious, but she's also very anxious. <laughs> it doesn't make sense in English, but I love it. Okay, so I think what they're trying to say is like she's not anxious now, but like in general, she's an anxious person. So Amona es dago urduria. I don't know. 
Hold on, let's go back to the thing. Does it say? Okay, if I go back and look at the explanation a little more carefully on the last page, it says, Tristea. Uh, mm, okay, okay, hold on, focus. So for Nolakua, the example Tristea da is permanently sad, I guess. And then Nola da go, Triste da go is more temporarily sad. So I'm going to use my powers of deduction here to say that when we're using da, we got to put an a, and when we're using da go, it's no a. Yeah? Okay. Well, let's see. That's how I'm processing this. So, esta go urduri blank, no a. Baña osho urduri a da. Next one, Amonaren Lagunak Osho Berichu Blank Dira. Amonaren Lagunak. So this is multiple people. Grandma's friends Osho Berichuak Dira. Eta Gaur Ere Berichu Daude. Leave it. Hold on. There's also an example for what to do when it's plural here. Tristeak dira, son tristes, or triste dalde. Okay, so we don't add anything when it's plural. Okay. Xavier et al leire sin so blank dalde. So we're going to leave that because it's egon. Ayek osho sin soak dira. Carmele et a Mikel alai blank dira. Okay. Alaya. Tira, eta gaur ere alai daude. That is how I've processed that lesson. That's how I've understood it, and that's how I'm gonna do it. So, thank you so much for watching today's episode of An American Tries to Learn Euskera. Unit three. How many units do we even have in this book? Oh, I've only got six units in this book, so I guess we're kind of halfway there, in a way. Um, which is exciting, but also like terrifying because when this is done, like I'm not going to the past country anytime soon to get the next workbook, you know, to level up. So, um, we'll see how it goes. Cat. I mean, I'll worry about that when we get to that. I mean, it'll be really great if I could get through this whole workbook. That's not a bad thing, but, um, yeah, luckily this is just like supplemental materials on top of the actual coursework that I'm doing through my Osketa class. So like, not to worry, this is all just bonus. So great, so fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to the channel to see more videos of me struggling to learn Osketa. And I'm very happy to have you along for the Hella Basque community, family, support group. You guys are everything. <laughs> so thanks for being here. I will see you in the next one. Hikushiarte.